So it's it's funny how closely Stellar tracks Ethereum, actually. I was going to say, that looks like the same graph to me. Yep. These are Thanks all a- the same fucking thing. What, what, what? Thanks a lot, Elon. <laughs> I feel yeah. like our typical ritual is to check out the price of XLM and talk about cryptocurrency for about 15 minutes. Let's do it. Is, it crashed. XLM, it crashed big time, right? Um, it crashed, but then it came back up. I'm, okay. I'm just looking at the last five days. It's been it's been an emotional journey for 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 Jeff and Dom. Now you See, realize that at, at some point, like look at yeah, oh yeah, look at that. No, cryptocurrency is just Elon Musk's mood tracker. Like, I'm gonna like, full screen this. <laughs> God, this is such a cool app. It's it's Yahoo. Yeah, but it's finance. But Yahoo Finance this is, is probably their best is. product, right? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. It's not in Yahoo Mail. I still have a Yahoo Mail account. And uh, let me tell you, <laughs> yeah, I, I do. You know what? You know what it is. If anybody wants to send me email, my my Yahoo Mail account is email underscore Jeff underscore Lee, which is my name. I mean, my name is Jeff Lee. My name is not email Jeff Lee, but <laughs> email underscore Jeff underscore Lee at Yahoo dot com. Send me some mail. I want to hear. I want to hear your thoughts. Now, do you, do you check this email account on the regular? I do not. I used to okay. actually. I used to have it hooked up to my iOS uh, mail notifications and everything. Oh, okay. That that it's is like a real account. Quasi, yeah. where I send spam, ish. Of course it is. But I don't even use it for logins anymore because it gets hacked like every three months. Well, yeah. Doesn't right. Yahoo get continuously breached? <laughs> <clears throat> yeah. I They're bad. This, I was checking the stream, and we look good. And our audio is good, I'm assuming. In fact, we look great. I, ha- yeah. I haven't taken a look. I, I have to go back and do the uh, edits for a pa- couple of past episodes. And like the previous one that I was in charge of the stream for, like I just didn't have my own audio for like half the time. I'm and so I, sorry. And I, yeah, that's rough. <laughs> no, no, no. And I and I and I suspect that was probably the case for the full episode. Oh, no. The time before, I haven't oh, I haven't shit. gone back to look. Okay. Uh, oh, it's not a big deal, but but like we didn't have ESK to 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 to, to help us out uh, that that one that one before. Oh, um, this, so. this sweet sweet content. Um, yeah, I actually I really like that yeah. I've got um, that we're back in audio hijack land because like I feel like I am once again in control uh, of the audio subsystem that runs the stream, unlike fucking Windows and Zoom or whatever else we were doing. Yeah, this this sucker is good though. Yes. So. Um, so check it out, yo. Like, uh, we're up for the year. Although, like, we kind of we almost dipped down to like the low, the the high point of a year ago. Yeah, but I, I didn't. We get a check. We got to check around those March numbers, right? Like, yeah, it was pretty good around here. Yeah. Oh, that, so you're saying that we could have? You're you're saying that we're still in that range? That was, was a nice say, check. That was, that, that was that check we got for those lumens was quite pleasant. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, it's a pretty, pretty one. nice little car payment there. Yeah, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. yeah. Okay, pre, pre- so that's how Jeff so. and Dom are doing in the financial department. <laughs> this is this is like all of our hopes are tied to this fucking fictitious currency. <laughs> now, is there is there a graph of cryptocurrency price and Elon tweets as uh, timeline demarcators? Because that's this is just like a mood ring for his fucking like Bitcoin portfolio, right? Uh, yeah. I mean, I. I, I <laughs> It's kind of it's so weird. You you would think that like crypto people would be like too edge lord for Elon Musk because he's so obviously a dork, but they love him. You would think so, but yeah, no yeah. taste. He doesn't say he doesn't say smart things, right? I but he's never... got a lot of money. I think yeah. that's what they ultimately respect. I mean, which if you're in crypto, I feel like that is your measure for respectability and success so i i like kind of get it mm. like mm. everyone in crypto is sort of like doing a dick measuring contest of their bitcoin portfolio so yeah do you get a lot of like ads when you watch youtube videos of for coinbase no i what have i been getting ads for though i'm getting a lot of the I don't same know why annoying I... ad I'm gonna open up a YouTube video and see what I get. Uh, Coinbase Learn is that what it, what it is? Oh boy. Um, there's like an yeah, learn and earn crypto. I can hear the audio. Oh wait, this is totally. Wow. This is, 
Totally. Some this is some random asshole that made this video. Um, but there's this like there's this ad where it, it's like you know come and learn about crypto and they call it crypto, right? Because of course they of do. course they do. Learn crypto yep. while learning about crypto. So uh, this is basically like the sort of corporate Memphis version of the Ponzi scheme marketing brochure, right? This is the timeshare <laughs> companies like like. You don't know anything about cryptocurrency, but we're going to give you a little, mm-hmm. right, to hook you in. Because basically the money that you put in is the money that we're going to take out. I, I right. noticed that uh, my, when, I, when I just sold out my Coinbase recently, I had a, like, it had a, like, a reward section. And it reminded me of Dropbox's, yeah. like, do it, you know, give us some personal info and we'll give you 100 megabytes, baby. <laughs> Uh, but I feel like they're just. They're I made up this like, coin, but I'll, I'm gonna give. I'm gonna give you some of this fictitious money. Yeah. Do you want some fake coin? Because I got fake coin out the wazoo. I can make you some coin. Yeah. Um, I'm sure there's. I just. I just. I just opened YouTube and posted. A, I posted a screenshot of the ad that I get for everything in the live channel. And I'm so. I was like, "What is F? F is Ford." Oh shit! All right. Okay. You know what? If you're Ford, you get to you get to take that letter. Yeah. Yeah, I guess so. They were like the original big capitalist co- corporation, right? Mm-hmm. Sci- scientific management. Wow, there's a lot uh, of weird stuff in here. <laughs> there's a lot of weird stuff, yeah. I like that some of the stocks um, are just losers. They're like, yeah, these guys are loser. losers. <laughs> losers. <laughs> <laughs> Is there a DAO stock? Oh, that's that's a Chinese. I thought it was like the, the digital autonomous... Oh, wouldn't that just be? Uh, I, thought, I thought Ethereum was the was the like the DAO sort of writ large. Yeah, the the, the, the DAO that you speak of was implemented on on Ethereum. Yeah. yeah. But yeah, so, so it, it, it turns this... out that everything you write in in Ethereum, all these con- contracts that you write, they all get hacked within like a matter of weeks. Oh yeah. Uh, so if you yeah. take this graph and then click over to a Bitcoin or Ethereum graph, it's the same graph, right? There's no like you get eh, okay. Slightly, slightly it's different. roughly the same shape. Yeah, if we go... Oh, can, can I combine two? Is that possible? Comparison! This website's mm-hmm. amazing. I would have been really proud to, to make this whole like front end. Right? It's pretty sweet. Uh, what the flip? <laughs> oh, BTC USD, I bet, since uh, it's trying to map it to dollar values. BTC dash USD? Yeah. Ah... Uh... I don't know about uh, that. <laughs> I'm gonna make this oh, cool. satanic red. Yeah. Look at this app. You would be really happy to make this app, right? <laughs> um, wait, why is it's doing it's doing percentage oh. changes? Which hey, our lumens are it's doing better than Bitcoin percentage wise. <laughs> it's it's a lot more dramatic. I'm confused by this. Can I can it's, I just make it absolute? What what? I bet. So. Oh, I guess it's just a comparison. Oh, the problem is, is that Bitcoin is worth forty thousand dollars a unit or more, and yeah. <laughs> lumens are worth forty cents. <laughs> well, throw throw like Ethereum on there too. Let's get let's get ETH USD in here as well, just to just to really enjoy the light show. ETH USD and Ethereum. I'm gonna make kind of a, a solid, unhealthy urine color. As I say, piss yellow. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> So it's it's funny how closely Stellar tracks Ethereum, actually. I was going to say, that looks like the same graph to me. Yep. These are Thanks all a- the same fucking thing. What, what, what? Thanks a lot, Elon. Yeah. So you're right. Is, is Tesla mixed up in here? Let's see. What? I don't think it's like the bit, the Bitcoin market. Tesla doesn't matter, right? Tesla doesn't matter. Um yeah, and I think Tesla just goes up and to the right too. Like the the bros, the bros love it. Oh, uh, okay. Or just kind of chop down there. I guess these yeah. are like. Am I seeing the weekends here? What's going on? I think I'm seeing weekends. Oh right, it's a publicly traded stock and not some like bullshit currency that we made up. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I forgot that that's how real money works. It takes a break yeah. on Sunday. Um, no, it's just like. Gosh, I'm so up- impressed by this website. I would have loved to make this website. <laughs> yeah i'm just i'm just like trying to figure out like you know no one actually 
like you're betting on crypto, but like you're all betting into the same pool with other people's made up currency too. Like every new coin is the same hedge against Bitcoin or hedge with Bitcoin. Yeah. It, yeah. There's not like a thriving market of like crypto competitors. It's just kind of like the one gambler market. <laughs> yeah. And who's the loser? Is it gold? I think gold is doing or, or is it just like, or just like, just like people's savings accounts, right? I think it's you, like, you don't yeah, earn like, anything putting money. In. Yeah. yeah. Whatever Rube buys Bitcoin now or like yeah. got it high. Yeah. I don't, know. I feel I don't, like I don't understand <clears throat> this speculation. It seems bad. There is, you know, let me go back to that thing. Uh, Coinbase learn crypto. Earn crypto to learn, learn crypto to earn crypto. Um, learn to earn so I feel like this very much, there's a story uh, somewhat apocryphal, but I think it's instructive of, of Joe Kennedy, mm-hmm. uh, patriarch of the Kennedy clan of, of you know, New England, um, who was very, very wealthy doing some unscrupulous thing. Uh, and then, like, in 1929, in the middle of the year, he goes and gets his, like, shoes shined by, right. like, the Oliver Twist child, you know, this malnourished, you know, wh- whip of a boy, you know, and he, and, and, and uh, the, the boy's kind of shining the dude's shoes, and he's like, so, Mr. Kennedy, I'm sure he has some voice like that, right? He's wearing the little, like, flapper cap, or news, news cap guy, you know, Um <laughs> He's like, what kind of stock tips uh, do you have for me? I want to like take my earnings and put them in the stock market, oh, you know. No. And Joe Kennedy was like, "Oh my god, uh, we're at the point now where some random little kid is putting his money in the stock market. This, this is a house of cards." So he like divests, right? No shit. And <laughs> that was the basis of the entire Ken- Kennedy family fortune. He got out at the top. Um, wow. And then so, so America entered a 10 year long depression. Yeah. Oh, fuck. His indicator that things were bad was that <clears throat> a plebeian wanted to buy stocks. And he's like, this ain't for normies. Get the fuck out of here. No, wow. I think the lesson is that, like, people were gambling openly. Mm. Like, even everyday people who shouldn't have been putting money into those, the stock market. And I think that's, gotcha. what, that's what this is. It's not that, like, I'm trying to gatekeep here. I'm not trying to gatekeep the blockchain world. But when everyday people are putting their money into, I don't know. I guess it's basically anytime you 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 um you financialize someone's debt, or mm-hmm. you you sort of like like the the moment that our retirement funds start having a large uh a large interest in cryptocurrency. That's it. It's going to be 2000, 2007 all over again, right? The market's going to crash. Oh, um, fuck. You're, you're totally cause, right. Because we'd be the suckers in the Ponzi scheme, right? Yeah. Uh, I don't like it. <laughs> this is not going to end well. I don't, I don't think this is going to end well. This is all going to go I, down to the bottom. I can't imagine any part of crypto ending well for anyone at this point. Well, I mean, like, I guess whoever bought well, the yacht because they sold their Bitcoin yesterday, but like... Ugh. Yeah. <laughs> yeah how's your week been going uh it's i guess i'm pretty good it's monday i guess it's monday so so yeah there's not a lot i'm gonna get rid of that yeah um, yeah I, uh, I spent i spent most of the day on the phone with moving companies because i'm moving and they're all scams yeah that seems to be the the consensus is that there is not a single real moving company in the country Tell me about this. I've heard you, you, you were telling me that it's kind of like hard to move right now, right? So I guess everyone has decided that COVID is over and they're moving. So I'm not a free thinker, which is too bad. I, okay. I, I, thought, I, I thought I was being clever, but in fact, I am, I am the... <laughs> You're just doing what every other reality. asshole is yeah, doing. I'm, yeah, yeah, exactly. every asshole in the country right now. Um, yeah. And there's only so many trucks to drive shit. So I guess prices have just doubled for one. Okay. Uh, but also, there, there seems to be a a market of companies that are just shitty WordPress sites where they have said, like, hey, we're registered with the Department of Transportation as, like, moving brokers. We'll give you a quote, and then we'll sell it to a truck, and someone will come to your house and take your shit, and it'll show up on the other side eventually. But they act they act yeah. like they're real moving companies, but at the end, they're, like, like they don't they don't drive trucks, nor do they load cargo or carry it for you. They're just, like... We're just we're just the middleman. Uh, okay, 
So basically, then that logistics contract gets sold and subdivided into like a bunch of little contracts, which then gets sold to actual the actual provider yeah. of services. Exactly. Uh, so it's like no one no one can actually tell you what your stuff is. No one's responsible for it because it's someone else's contract. It's, it, it's yeah. a small nightmare. And also, no one will come look at your stuff because it's COVID. So you kind of have to like give them an ex- estimate. <sighs> text and with photos you're just like here's here's a picture of my things how much will it be it's i just hope it works out yeah 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 so uh, what are you gonna do not not excited i yeah i'm i'm gonna i'm trying to i have given up i figured out that i've been talking to only scam people so i'm gonna try to call the people who actually have trucks and employees that move shit Mm. like at the very least i would like to contract a company that does the thing that i'm paying them for go figure question number one how many trucks do you have yeah, like, and if do, there's any you, hesitation in the answer to that question, yeah, do you own a truck? Like, it could be, it could be a pickup. Like, it's fine, but like, you got one, right? Yeah. Um. So it's like it's that, and get some quotes, and they are unsurprisingly much more expensive because apparently the brokers just undersell, and the trucks can charge whatever they want when they get there because you didn't get mm. the actual you didn't get the actual deal for like okay, it's this many dollars for this many pounds from the company that's carrying your shit. Wow. Uh, so, so it's gangbusters for the logistics business, business right now. Yeah, That's I mean, they're okay. they're either doing well or scamming the shit out of people, or like somewhere in the middle. Um, Got it. So it's either like I find a truck company, or I get one of those like pods and load it myself and hope it gets there in one piece. And those, yeah, those okay, can, those are kind of yeah. legit. Like you just, but like if anything breaks, no one pays you for it because it's you packed it, which sucks. You don't have that much stuff, though, right? You've got I, the I truly don't. one bedroom apartment. Yeah, yeah, just the one bedroom. I don't have much stuff, like, and if my TV breaks, I'll just get a new TV. Like, I don't really care. Wow. Yeah. Big so, money. Big, big, big money to Grotti over here. I mean, gosh, my five hundred dollar <laughs> TV is probably not even worth it to move across the country, right? Like, I don't know. Right. I'm throwing a bunch of right. shit out because it's not cost effective to move it, which is really annoying. Yeah. Yeah, I, I'm the kind of guy, I think I, I tend to, like, just, like, buy Ikea shit all the time, right? So, like, any one item is not worth moving, right? Mm-hmm. You can just buy the $60 bookshelf again. Um, yeah, but I, you could not make that call for everything, right? Yeah, I, it's, I made a spreadsheet of the things I own and have sort of, like, parceled it out in definitely move because this costs real money or, like, was four hours at ikea there's an ikea near where you're moving go to ikea so if you're now willing to bite the bullet to like research moving companies does this mean you are a confirmed new home- homeowner now is that like no is that like a yet. done deal or <laughs> okay so you're just kind of trying to line things up in a row well yeah because everyone since everyone is doing this like i have to do it two months in advance <laughs> This is uh, like I, trying to apply for uh, a daycare for the for the child that you haven't even conceived yet, right? That's oh, like yeah, a classic yeah, Bay Area exactly experience, like right? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Precisely. <laughs> I'm I'm yeah. so annoyed. So yeah, it's okay. I lost yeah. like a whole workday doing it, and that's I don't know. It was a fine use of my workday. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so you're letting your employer pay for it. That's fine. Uh yeah. I mean, hope no one's watching. But uh, yeah, yeah, basically. Whatever, they're all know. doing the same thing. I was gonna say, yeah, we're also He I'm, who is without sin cast the first stone. Dom's yeah, I, co-workers. And I work just, just I remember work that. hours. I work weird hours and I do weekend shit sometimes. Like, I don't know. I've banked yeah. I've banked a day of moving companies. And then I wrote a merge request anyway yes. to like at least uh I feel like I did something. Merge request. That's what they call them in uh every, in GitLab, huh? <laughs> every time I say GitLab, every time I say merge request, you're like, oh, what a weird thing you just said. Well, what I what I what I will say is it is a better name than pull request. Like I I I want nobody to ever pull anything from code I put out there. Like please please do not pull on this. Please just merge into your code base. Yeah, I don't understand the terminology at all. <clears throat> I I assume it's like actually from the days when you had to pull someone else's entire repo to get their branch, perhaps. Yeah, I mean. Technically, they're fetching from your fork and then merging it. I guess it's a poll. Mm-hmm. Uh, you call it a poll? Mm-hmm. Sure. It's kind of nonsense. I was I was trying to make an off-color joke, too, but uh, it's kind of nonsense. 
Wait, wait, wait. Explain the off-color joke to me in, in, in like, painful detail, because I missed a it. Pull re- <laughs> a pull request? I don't know, man. I I thought the joke wrote itself. It just, oh, 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 I see. I see what you're saying. It just it just sounds like a hand job. I don't know. I was just being oh. I was just being the saucy one for once. <laughs> the, you know, it's funny. I, my mind frequently does go there, but I it never went there with pull request. <laughs> I think it was just part oh, of. And that, now every entire, time I say it, you're going to giggle. In my entire career in in software, I've just been like, this is a very funny name for this thing, and I can't believe we all say this out loud. So I was actually like, uh, yeah. I thought merger, I thought merge request is actually like good. Okay. And you, usually, okay. usually you're the one worried about being canceled, but this will be mine. you but you'd be canceled by the Puritans. I think you want to be canceled by let, those types let them, of people. Let them come, right? frankly. Yeah. Let them cancel you. Yes. Mm-hmm. It's like, um, well, I don't know. You don't want to be canceled in general, but you would, you'd at least like to be canceled by the assholes, right? Like, like, yeah, uh, I mean, you, if, you know, the, uh, if the sorry, right comes for me, that that's fine. <laughs> Like let let the right do it, yeah. Yeah, well, hopefully it won't be your livelihood. There was that um, uh, I believe her name was Emily Wilder. She was a journalist for the AP, mm-hmm. uh, and it was uh, very early on, very early in her career. But uh, uh, she apparently her bosses apparently discovered that she uh, was a very vocal pro Palestinian Jew when, oh, in, at least in her university days. Stanford, no less. Um, the Harvard of the West, <laughs> for those of you that don't know. Um, but uh, yeah, she was fired from her job. And God damn it. The, at least the way it's being covered, it, it, it is, she got fired because of her past activity. And people are pointing to it as an example of a kind of co-optation of can't, can't cancel culture if you believe that it is an actual thing um i, I mean on the part of the this, right <clears throat> this is this is i have this like i have this political philosophy well in, well in dsa as well but like the right is just more i don't know they're more willing to like get their hands dirty and like when when the left comes up with a good tool the right's just like oh yeah sweet i can hit you with that too like gotcha like yeah 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 like they they are ruthless and clever and like immediately ready to like jump on any sort of functional yes um activism you come up with and they're like oh yeah yeah great idea like we can definitely do that and it sucks (laughs) yes uh I, i think the tool in question here is uh like some sort of like you know performative moralism Conducted through social media, basically, right? Something, yeah, something well, of that and nature. It, yeah, and it's tough because, like, I find, I find that like a lot of things are sort of, and maybe maybe I'm super biased, but on the left, done in like some semblance of good faith, where it's like, yeah, like, right, like maybe you shouldn't support apartheid regimes elsewhere in the world, and the right's like, we noticed you said fuck once, like. <laughs> you, your impure right. morals it's time to get out of here so it's like right. it's like right. it's not an even balance but they managed to use the same tactic tactic is the word i've been looking for yes yeah it's and, and it's like, actually kind of nothing yeah it's kind of nothing new uh um, no it's it's like it's, the whole history. the whole the whole concern about like sexual mores in in, oh in like in late ni- 1990s politicians did you have an affair or not yeah i think it's the same the same exact shit right yeah, or like all the all maybe the it's nothing when like it's coming from like politicians who are secretly hooking up with boys or something like child young boys and you're just like you're like wait a minute like how did we how are we taking advice from these people why are they the ones giving yeah. us our our advice on morality it's really it's all really weird right. yeah 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 they're, it's it's just as much noise as you can throw out there to make everything seem ridiculous is very effective yeah. <laughs> Um. Anyway, maybe I, I don't, should. I don't. I don't, write some I don't miss code. politics all day long. Let's do some code. Yeah. <laughs> what do you want to work on? We started working on, on a level editor last time, and we split the game into multiple pieces, which I thought was going to be really bad. And it did take me kind of all weekend to like re- to like kind of like so you, kind you of build back did, the foundation. You, but I. Yeah, you renamed everything, right? You went in and sort of pulled on the thread we started and went all the way. I did because I thought it might. 
help us. Uh, I didn't yeah. really figure out the whole entry points thing, but like we do have an engine folder and folder now. Um, the engine way. roughly being a framework mm-hmm. of moderately coupled components that you could use to build any game theoretically that had the rough structure that we currently have. And then the game actually has really specific stuff in it. It has the actual graphics and the components and that sort of thing. Mm-hmm. Nice. Um, now, I think the original thing that we were trying to do is to make a map editor that used our engine, but mm-hmm. didn't necessarily need all the game logic and that kind of stuff, right? Yeah, because we um, wanted like free free motion and like a different set of systems. We, we did this because we wanted to yeah. make a multiplayer map editor specifically, because uh, yeah. we're masochists like that. Because because we're masochists. <laughs> um, now, uh, it, it kind of occurred to me a little bit over the weekend that it would be cool if the game itself was the editor. I think we talked a little mm-hmm. bit about that last time, but we got yep. scared. But it might not be. It yep. might be fun to do. The now, other thing yeah, we could work on. Yeah. Mm-hmm. By the way, is our audio a little off tonight? I feel like I keep cutting you off, and I wonder if it's Discord. I think there's probably just an extra, you know, whatever that tiny 10 milliseconds of delay that now causes us to completely fall apart, right? Fair enough, yeah. That that must be it. Um, I, I I remember when you were talking about the map error stuff, uh, making it the game, you were like, you don't want to see, like, a bunch of, like, com- a bunch of, like, if editor mode stuff uh littered throughout but i wonder if we can make it all happen within the simulate function itself and just have one sort of if statement um because like maybe not have systems yeah. branch but have the simulation branch for the mode we're in and that seems more doable to me yeah i know what you mean i know okay. what you mean um we'd have to do something stu- for stuff that's like not those systems like um all, all the side effects and you have to decide whether or not to have them on or not. Uh, yeah, I, I'm actually less worried about that now and more worried about just having to make the behavior decisions on, you know, let's say you ed- you, you edit the level, mm-hmm. but you've modified the level by interacting with it in the game in the gameplay. What oh. does the edit mm-hmm. apply to? Does it apply to the state of the world that you're currently in or does it apply to the original state of the world do you, do you see what i'm saying um that's a great question yeah and that's yeah I've, that's a confusing question that i always kind of wonder how people deal with in the in-game map mm-hmm. editor map editor kind of kind of kind of thing <clears throat> yeah and like do you like reset do you reset the simulation of the game the, the state of the level every time you do an edit right that's a great question that's, yeah hmm so here's the thing: is that we have currently um, the ability to switch between tabs, <laughs> you know, because we we we're, we're 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 cool that way. And so we could have a separate map editor and a separate game mm-hmm. running in different tabs, and still kind of get the, the 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 quick feedback cycle that we would we would want otherwise. So I, I think, given the current context, I think we're okay, right? Okay, because the game rebuilds yeah. so quickly. Yeah, and I think you know. If we if we build out the systems for the editor and we once it's all put together, we're like, oh, this would actually make sense to flip into a mode for the game. Like, it'll be easier to combine it later than to try to tease it apart after the fact. So we might as well start separate. Yeah. So what I was going to ask though is that we've also been talking about um, pathfinding a lot, and yeah. we have a couple of promising candidates of pathfinding we could potentially work on. Mm-hmm. Um. And yeah, because, I'm, uh, mm-hmm. yeah, no, I'm, uh, I'm, no, I'm going to let you finish your try out some of this audio is really messing me up. Uh, I, I definitely <laughs> interested in trying a couple of pathfinding algorithms. It would be, I feel like we've, I've read a bunch of different, I've read a bunch of different algorithms so far this week. So like, yeah, definitely, definitely curious to try, um, jump point search uh, on top of what okay. we got and see how that feels. Lovely. Yeah, All right. You, you jump point search. That? Yeah. Yeah. All right, let's do jump point search. Okay, uh, I'm gonna open up the thing here. Mm-hmm. Uh, I don't know if you have your iPad on you, but uh, I, I want to talk a little bit about jump point search. Uh, I actually read the paper, which oh, is nice. from this guy, and the paper's a computer science paper. Do you know what I mean when I say computer science paper? It, 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 oh, have you yeah. read a computer computer science paper? Like, yeah, they 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 omit a lot, right? 
mm-hmm. they kind of just expect you to know what they're talking about, right? Um, yeah. So this is a, a pretty genius algorithm in the sense that it was invented as late as 2011, and yet everybody uses it, right? Uh, or at least I think a lot of people have used it. And it's shockingly simple. Not shockingly simple in the sense that I actually understand it, because I don't really. But it's mm-hmm. simple in the sense that it's actually really brief. Um, is there a way that I can find this paper? From that list, gosh. Yeah, right. I, like, um, I do. I, I do like it's that not one, the Harabog really this one for, for Haribor. Is it this one? It is this one. This is this is like his official paper, right? Oh, nice. So. Uh, uh, oh, yeah, these, these these, these folks like yeah yeah they uh, they they came up with a brilliant thing that's like pretty novel in its simplicity yet like their whole thing like if <laughs> this is like classic computer science paper stuff right if the direction is diagonal then for all of i element one and two <laughs> jump d sub i like. What does it mean to iterate over? I, I, what they're saying is it's components of this vector, right? And, and d sub i is the directional component of this mm. diagonal vector. But it's like it took me forever to figure out what the hell they were talking about. And, and like I, I, I honestly think they're being very casual about this this notation, right? Um, yeah, I, I always found that the best way to deal with this stuff is to find someone's actual implementation of the algorithm, too. Because, yeah, every time I read the paper, I'm just like, the fuck? And then when I look at the thing, I'm like, oh, okay, it yeah. does that. So, And they have, like, a very, very terse kind of proof of optimality here, which I didn't even bother reading because I was kind of turned off by it. But, but so I spent a long time trying to figure out what they were talking about. Like, this diagram here, which is replicated in many, many websites about this algorithm, right? And I think he... Includes one in his own website. And I think this one here actually has like um, what appears to be like an expansion of that diagram. This one's actually a little bit better. Actually, I think this might be borrowed from somebody else. This one. Oh, yes, this one's really good. This is probably the best one. Um, I read all of these and I'm like, I still don't really understand this. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so I did what you did and I read someone's source code. And I finally understood. I read some person who said it was like, I'm an undergraduate. I was trying to, I was trying to figure out this, this maze solving that I was given. And I worked on it really hard for a couple of weeks and I finally figured it out. And I was like, you know what? This person's like way better than me. <laughs> like they, 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 They've only been in the, bi- the game for like a couple of years. Yet they had the tenacity to kind of like master a particular paper, right? And it, it took them weeks. They like didn't understand it the same way that I didn't understand it. But I basically lost patience after a day, and I was like, "I'm gonna just like search for this on GitHub." It's honestly a skill so, I wish I'd gotten better at in school is digesting these papers. Um, but it's probably the reason yeah, I didn't 100%. become a I didn't become a master's or PhD student because every time I did one of these, I was like, "No, thank you." Yeah, yeah, one hundred percent. Okay, so uh, let's actually uh, so JPS is actually. Uh, an extension of a star it's not an it's not as it is like a, a like a, a variant that you should use if you have a grid right right um and jump point search also assumes uh you can make diagonal moves in addition to north south east west moves so there are eight ways you can move which is actually not too different than our a star uh implementation that we did gosh almost a year ago now right Oh my god. Uh, really? Oh. Yeah. <laughs> really. Um, so I just want to re- sort of like get our brains back in a pathfinding mode. Mm-hmm. Is that okay? Okay. Yeah. So well, and A Star, I, I feel that that one's still working in my head for some reason, but it, it was really simple. It was it was very pleasant. It's pretty simple. Yeah. Yeah, and in fact we don't even have to say A Star. We can just say Dykstra, right? Because a star is just Dijkstra with an extra modifier on the cost function, right? Mm-hmm. Okay. So let's get ourselves back into A star mode. Uh, I'm just going to make some arbitrary set of walls. Can you see the grid lines? Is that visible? 
Um, it's a little light. All right. I wish I could do something about that. As I said, can't make those darker, can you? Yeah, I, I can't really. No. I can't really. Let there's, me see. There's here. just yeah. show grid. Yeah, that's okay. I could mess with the CSS, but I'm tired of messing with people's <laughs> web pages. I mean, can you? I assume this is um, Canvas. Let's not. So, oh, you're right. They're probably not using uh, DOM objects, right? Yep. Oh, well. Yeah, it's okay. Well, sucks to be us. <laughs> um, okay, uh, so let's just get, get ourselves back into Dijkstra mode. Uh, let's just say we've got something like this. Mm-hmm. And let's say we start here and our destination is here, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, I've been using source and destination. I think origin is more properly the opposite of destination, but origin is always confusing to me because I also think of the origin of a coordinate system. Mm-hmm. So I say the source. Um, And Dijkstra's... Yeah, go ahead. No, I like it. My audio is clearly three seconds behind yours. I blame Discord. (laughs) Sorry. (laughs) I blame Discord, too. Yeah. But whatever, they're great. Mm -hmm. Um, Okay, so uh, Dijkstra, once again, was about uh, uh, having an open list and a list... uh, Basically, a list of uh nodes that you have you're aware of but haven't visited yet and that is called the open list right mm-hmm. um and that is the frontier of where the algorithm has scanned so the open list for our source node are these if you can move north south east and west in all the diagonals the open list looks like that in red Right. So what you do in Dijkstra and in A-star is you say, I'm going to basically iterate over every, uh, everything in my open list and, and basically re- repeat the algorithm for, for each one of those. But I'm going to choose which one I start with based on some cost function. Right, there's some ranking of those three nodes. And the ranking that you come up with in Dijkstra is just however long it takes, however long the path that took you there is currently, right? Okay. So the path from the source to this first neighbor is probably just one, right? One unit. The path to the second neighbor is the square root of two, which is slightly larger than one. Okay. And the path distance to oh, that's not what I meant to do. I'm, I'm actually just labeling the nodes here. Um, the path distance to this third this third neighbor here is is also just one, right? So mm-hmm. the one immediately to the east and the one immediately to the south, they're both the same cost. So you're just going to pick one of those arbitrarily, right? And when you visit that node, you say, okay, well, up to this point, I know that the best distance is the the be, like the, the the fastest way for me to get here is basically a path of cost one, and I'm gonna go ahead and look at all the neighbors for this, uh, for the the node that I'm currently on, right, which is the the one marked number one right there. So I'm gonna use like a different color for that one. So the neighbors are this one, which I'll call four. And this one, which I call five, right? Um, and then you're gonna end up basically doing the same thing for you're gonna be, you're gonna go to every like unvisited node in the open list uh, based on some heuristic, which is like the shortest path length, right? So the next one you would go to is are these two. Uh, and then finally, you would go to this one here because it's diagonal from the square root of two one, and this one's eight, right? Um, and that's Dijkstra. The only difference between Dijkstra and A star is that the way that you prioritize these things in A star gets mixed in with an additional cost function, which traditionally, but not exclusively, is 
the distance from a particular node, oh, that's totally legible, distance from a particular node to the destination that you're going to, right? Mm -hmm. And since you're trying to minimize that number, what it's going to eventually start doing is prioritize nodes in the open list that are closer to your destination, right? So something like this is going to be preferable to, I don't know, something that like this, which is like an equal distance away from the source. But this one, since this one's closer, when you add that distance into the cost function, and if you're trying to minimize it when you sort them, um, it's going to pick this one first. Yeah. And that has a tendency to, to work better for problems, for like, you know, pathfinding problems that actually oper operate in anything that resembles real space, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, so that's all kind of familiar, right? Um, yep. With jump point search, the difference is in how you add nodes to the open list, okay? Um, that's the major importance, although I don't think it's the only... Uh, sorry, that's the major important difference. I don't think it's the only difference, though. Um, all right, so I think, first of all, it's probably good to talk a little bit about, like, why jump point search is better than A star, given the fact that, like, every good pathfinding algorithm ends up being some version of A star or some version of Dijkstra, right? Mm -hmm. like, so the, the point, problem... is specifically grid-friendly, too, right? It's, it's that we're using the grid that helps this out. It's exactly right. You can basically take advantage of some external knowledge about the structure of the graph. Uh, and the graph being these kinds of like nodes linked to other nodes, right? Mm -hmm. You can use some external knowledge about that, about that structure and, and what paths it creates um, to basically skip some steps that Dijkstra other, would otherwise have to go through, right? So one of the things that's funny about Dijkstra, let's even just take what we did in the corner here, right? Is that you can actually come up with multiple paths that end up in the same location. And especially in like a giant open space, there ends up being like identical paths at the same point. And you'll see that like in, in a lot of these blog posts, they kind of like really try to illustrate this. This is a pretty good drawing, right? Like you're trying to go from the, the, the green square to the red square. And you'll notice that, like, you basically have, like, this, like, if you follow the perimeter of, of the outside of this shape here, that's one of the paths that is optimal. Mm -hmm. You also have another path that's kind of its mirror image coming down from here. And then you also have paths where you kind of, like, chunk it up into, like, you basically just, like, take a diagonal move and take a move to the east and just, like, combine a bunch of those in a particular order. And as long as you have three moves to the east and three moves diagonally some in some order, you're going to get there, right? Yeah. So the problem with Dijkstra is it actually goes over a bunch of these paths in order to decide that they're all ultimately equivalent with each other, right? right. And it's just moving very, very slowly through all of these nodes here and adding them to the open list and saying, okay, I'm going to add it to the open list. And it's because it doesn't know that all of these paths are more or less equivalent, right? Um, the, the word that they use in this paper on jump point search is called symmetry. They're basically saying that all of these paths here that are described are symmetric with each other, right? They call them symmetric paths because they're effectively identical. There you go. And, yep. So what you're trying to do is say, like, look, I'm just going to call, like, I, I'm going to, like, make up some rule about these paths. And basically, I want to I, I want to make up a rule that says only one of these paths can actually be correct. And it's not correct, quote unquote, in terms of like actually creating an optimal path. It's just correct in this like this funny little imaginary world that you're creating, right. It's like we're playing the floor is lava or something like that. You just can't step on the yellow, the yellow tiles, the kitchen tiles or whatever. You're just saying like, OK, because I don't want to go over every single one of these paths, I'm going to invent a rule set that says like um, only one of these paths is actually valid. And 
the hope there is that if you make a rule like that, then your search algorithm doesn't have to like redundantly search a bunch of this extra crap, right? That's basically the idea that, that they were yep. going for. So the rule that they came up with was that you need to make all of your diagonal moves as early as you possibly can. So path are ones where you can kind of permute the motions in the path, and they get you to the same spot, right? Um, they're basically saying, like, some permutations are not valid. Any permutation that does a diagonal move later than you could have done it is not valid. So, you, like, let's just take the bottom perimeter here, right? Mm -hmm. um, this does three eastern moves and three northeastern moves, and the three northeastern moves are the last things that you do. And since these diagonal moves are coming later than you could have done them, they're just saying that this path is not a legal one. They're just saying you shouldn't do that. Mm -hmm. um, so this is the only legal path, according to Jump Point Search. This is the one that Jump Point Search would pick, is the one on the top. Right? Gotcha. Yep. Uh, that, that makes okay. sense. Yeah, yeah. So, so I guess the question at this point is, like, how does a rule like that actually help you? Mm -hmm. Well, we can go down to some of these diagrams down here. I'm going to blow this up. Um, so basically, uh, this diagram here, uh, actually, this is the diagram that I think we should, point, should, pay, we should pay attention to. Um, what they're saying is that we are currently on this green tile, but we're, we came from the parent of this green tile is this gray tile here, right? So this is a typical sort of situation in Dijkstra's algorithm where you are on a particular node. This was on the open list, and this is the highest priority thing you wanted to ex examine next, but it has a link back to where you came from, right? Mm -hmm. um, basically, you now, when you, what do you do with Dijkstra? When you have a node on the open list, what do we say? You just like look at its neighbors and add them to the open list, right? Mm -hmm. um, the thing here is that what jump point search says is that the only valid neighbor is this open white tile to the east. And they're saying that the one above you, the one below you, the one to your, to your southeast, and the one to your northeast are all invalid. And why is that the case? Well, you came, you know that you came from this previous node, right? Which means that going to uh... this northwestern node is is never going to be the right choice because you you'd be like doing extra redundant work and that's never going to be the, the shortest path, right? So that's that can't be one of your neighbors. It's not going to be the node to directly to the north of you because there's a shorter path, right? This diagonal path which is only square root of 2, it would have been two units to get to this one to the north based on the current current path you're on right now, <laughs> right? And the same is true by symmetry for this one to the south and the one to the southwest, right? That's clever. The interesting ones are the ones to the northeast and southeast. Why are those illegal, right? Because technically, there's multiple paths that are the same distance, right? It's because we have that tie-breaking rule that says you need to do the, you need to do the diagonals first, mm -hmm. right? If you need to do the diagonals first, then in order for you to get to this northeastern tile, you should have gone northeast from the parent and then gone, gone east from there, right? We're just saying that, like, look, if there's a path that you go east and then northeast, or you go from the northeast to the east, it's that second one. That's the only one that's valid, right? The first one isn't valid. So that's why you can eliminate that as a neighbor, right? Wow, that's so clever. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah. So what you can do is you can just add this to the open list, okay? So this is the next one that gets added to the open list, abstractly speaking, right? Mm -hmm. The diagonal case is a little more confusing, right? Um, because let's take a look at this thing here. What they're saying is that if you are in this green tile again, uh, what are your valid neighbors? It, they're saying that it's basically this node, this node, and this. Let me see if I can find a better, better image here. Ah, this one's a little bit better, right? Because they've kind of grayed out all the nodes that like you shouldn't be using. Right. Mm -hmm. um, when you go diagonally, you're coming from six, but you're now on X. This is the node that you've just popped off the open list and you're examining right now. And you're saying, okay, I want to add my neighbors to the open list. Um, 
Well, let's look at all the neighbors. Tile number one, I'm not gonna go to because you could have more quickly gone just directly vertical for my parent. Tile number four, well, you could have gone, you say, by, by the same logic, you could have just gone there more direct. And the same thing with seven and eight, right? However, if you want to go to tile number two, three, or five, the fastest way for you to get there from six, if you're going through X, is to actually go through X, right? So these are all valid neighbors to look to look at, right? Um, Speci yeah. Specifically for this algorithm too, it works better with like wide open spaces, correct? That's like, it's sort of- That's forte. exactly, yeah, that's exactly what its forte is, right? Because cool. if you think about it, if you have wide open spaces, that's where you're most likely to have these symmetric or redundant paths. It's when you have a bunch of open space that you have a bunch of redundant stuff. Yep. Yeah, yeah uh, I'm playing with the, the try it out at the top of that, um, this post, in fact, the zero width post, because uh, it's, it's yes. very cool. Yeah. Mm hmm Yep, yeah. I like that It a looks lot. really cool. Uh, it, it looks really cool. I think it also, it's, I did one where it had to turn around, which I thought was interesting as well. Um, hmm. Because it, it's... Uh, what does that look like to turn around? Uh, like where you can't, like all, all of these vectors are moving, have sort of a direction to it, but to approach the red cube, the red square from the back, it has to do like a turn. But it kind of... That's it. Just so you makes, see, it see kind, kind of, of did this sort of thing? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yep. yep, and once it once it gets to its greenfield stuff, it's great. So, I like it. Most of our map is open. Yeah. Okay, so there's a couple of interesting cases here, right? All, everything that we totally wide open, right? When I talked the case, like all of these nodes were completely open, <laughs> but there are sometimes when if there's sometimes a case when the northeastern tile is actually a valid neighbor. Mm -hmm. And that is when the northern tile is occupied by a wall, right? Mm, when you get to yep. this situation, it's no longer the case that going th from your parent around the green tile is necessarily going to give you a faster path to the purple tile, right? That makes sense, yeah. So in this situation, if you check above you and you say, oh, this is actually blocked off, then this purple tile is a valid neighbor when you're coming, when you're moving sort of like either along rows or along columns, right? By the way, everything that I'm saying about this thing moving from the parent eastward to the current tile is true if you're going in any of the four cardinal directions, right? You can just imagine just yeah. rotating this view, right? Totally, totally. And the same is true of the diagonal, the diagonal case, right? Mm -hmm. So the diagonal yeah, case has similar things like that. I yeah, saying, what I like about this algorithm is that it really is just applying one more pretty easy heuristic to how, how we yep. do stuff like this doesn't feel like a radical shift nor do we have to deal with like nav meshes which is nice also yep. we're going to name this episode but 21 jump point street <laughs> <laughs> amazing yes um so uh with the diagonal case uh okay by the way there's a terminology in the algorithm uh called forced neighbor he, he, he bold mm -hmm. he bolds it here in the blog post uh, they call this purple tile the forced neighbor because there was a wall here that would that forces this otherwise this tile that we would have otherwise ignored. It forces it to become a neighbor, right? Um, so the forced neighbor situation when you're moving diagonally is if a tile immediately to, I guess, to your west or to the south is occupied, and in which case either the northwest tile becomes a forced neighbor or the southeast tile becomes becomes a forced neighbor. Because before or otherwise, you just would have ignored them because of our, our heuristic about what paths are valid and which ones aren't valid, right? Interesting. Okay. Okay, yeah. So you can just implement... You can just implement uh, Dijkstra on a grid using this neighbor selection uh, system and you would be golden and you would get some savings right because like you wouldn't be adding like in this case you'd only be adding like three neighbors as opposed to let's say seven neighbors right that's a pretty nice discount right yeah exactly yeah i like that even but in the worst kind of, case this yeah. is more optimal than dykstra's yeah even in the worst case it's more optimal right 
However, they actually take it even further. And this is the confusing part of the algorithm to me, right? This is the one that I don't 100% grok. Okay. When you see diagrams, let me get rid of uh, my extra stuff here to simplify this a little yeah. bit. When you see diagrams that describe jump point search, mm-hmm. um, you typically see it in this formation where you have the source, the destination. You have these grayed out tiles, which actually represent the tiles that were added into the open list. Yep. And you also see these like dotted lines here. And all of this is derived from the original paper, which I believe I've already lost the link to. But this is the same diagram in the paper. Right? This is the same dude's blog post. Right. Um, this is the author of the paper. He also made a blog post. You always see diagrams that look like this. Mm-hmm. And also the name of the algorithm is jump point search. And you're like, well, where did the jumping happen? Right. Mm-hmm. So uh, where the jumping happens is that like in this case here, right, this is the most basic case that we were looking at here. You don't actually add this grid node. You usually don't add this grid node to the open list directly. What you do do is you basically say, OK, this is my current situation. What I'm going to do is, you know, I'm basically going to be like examining the, the nodes around me to see which ones are blocked off because I'm looking for forced neighbors. Mm-hmm. Otherwise, I'm going to keep going in the same direction that I currently that I'm currently going until I hit particular conditions. So I don't actually directly add this tile here as as my neighbor. I actually jump over it and I keep going and I look for tiles that will add to the open list that aren't my neighbor, which is what you see in this diagram here, right? This gray, this gray node here is not a na- direct neighbor of this green tile, and yet that's the next thing in the open list that got that got examined, right? Now, what is the heuristic for throwing out, like from that green node, the very first uh, vector that goes straight to the east uh, and hits a wall? Why do you throw it out uh, when it hits the wall? I guess it's not yeah. diagonal um, to the wall, so you know it's not optimal. Okay, yeah. Weird. Yeah, you basically, like, implicitly, there would probably be nodes in all of these directions. But what you do is, like, when you look for your neighbors, what you do is you just keep moving until you hit a situation where you actually have to add, uh, add a tile. And the, the conditions where you actually have to add something are as follows. Well, basically, what you do is you say, okay, let's say I'm looking for my neighbors and my, t- my current tile is this is this is this green one and let's say our our directionality is eastward right um what's a little bit tricky about the origin is that there is no direction there's no parent so you basically just have to pick your directionality arbitrarily so let's say i'm gonna like pick my directionality and i'm going east what you do is you keep searching east and if you hit a wall or if you hit the border of the grid you do nothing you basically say i haven't found a neighbor okay but if you're in one of these points and you're going east and you hit the goal, you basically say, OK, I'm adding the goal as a neighbor. And then mm-hmm. when you add the goal to the open list, the, the next time that the algorithm comes around to actually pull that off the open list, you would have found your optimal path, right? That's, gotcha. that's, that's the way that Dijkstra works, right? You, put, you push the goal. The first time you basically add the goal into the open list, that's not necessarily the optimal path. But, uh, I, or it might be, actually. Dijkstra ha- is, is not quite a greedy algorithm, but it is sort of greedy in certain situations, right? I think it is the case. No, it's not the case. It's not the case that if you add the goal onto the open list, you're done. You have to, like, actually pull the goal off the open list, and then you know you're done. Does that make sense? Yeah. Right. You could have a graph node that took you five units to get to, and it takes ten units to get from that node to the goal. And you could have a different node that's like it took you seven units to get to, but it's only one unit to the goal. And the first one that you're going to consider is the is the is the tile that's five units away, and then you're going to push the uh, the goal onto the open list with a path length of fifteen. And then next, you're going to get to that seven, uh, that that tile with the seven uh, seven unit path length, and then you're going to add the goal on with a path length of eight. 
Mm-hmm. So that's not the first time you got to the goal, but it is. But so you have to like pull the goal off the open list for you to know that you're done. Does that make sense? Yeah. Yeah, it does. Okay. Um. So the times that you actually add a neighbor onto the list are when you come to a forced neighbor for that node. So this is the confusing part. Right. Let's say I'm moving diagonally and I get to this point. Normally, when you're going diagonally, the only neighbors you have to care about are these three. But because this tile is filled in, this node here is actually a forced neighbor of this, this thing that we're on. Right. So what we do in this case is we go, oh, OK, actually, this is going to go onto the open list. And we throw it onto the open list. Right. Does that make sense mm-hmm. so far? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, this all um it makes it yeah. it makes a strange amount of sense in fact. Like I feel like this is just structured in a very understandable way for a pathfinding algorithm. Yeah. Okay, so I think as we start to write the code, we're going to find situations where we're like, well, how do they know, for example, like if if this tile here went onto the open list, how come it's not going backwards? How come it's not searching backwards, right? Yep. Um, and I think it's not searching backwards because it know because its parent is going this direction, right? Its parent it knows that its parent is 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 uh, basically to the southwest of it, and therefore it knows that these can't be neighbors, right? Is it is it uh, useful to think that the only thing it can do is turn a certain number of degrees, like it? That's it's too far. It's more than ninety degrees to turn backwards, and I think that's not how turning around a corner in this algorithm I think works. Maybe what it is is that would, let's say we, we we add this to the open list. We come around and we we actually this is the next tile to pop off the open list. I think we just have to yeah. go back to these diagrams. We just have to go back to we just have to go back to this one. We know right, that if it, we're it, coming it, diagonally, yeah, it's the the direction that you're entering limits your exit directions. Yeah, no, that's no exactly matter right. what. Yeah, um, yeah. and it, it's not about like the starting point, but it is about the direction you were entered from. So, yeah. Okay. Yeah. So, actually, I think you're identifying an edge case that we need to account for, which is, let's say you add this node down here to the open list because you're entering mm-hmm. from the you're, you're entering from the northwest. If you if if the Dijkstra kind of like iteration also leads to the same tile. But you're coming in from the south west. I think you have to push this tile on twice into the open list. Once when you're coming in from the northwest, and once when you're coming in from the southwest. Ooh, is that possible with this algorithm? I'm not sure you could construct something that would do that though. Because if what about this node? And this node is basically perfectly symmetric, right? Yeah. Yep, but each of, each of those entry points can only check a certain number of directions, and that's it. Yeah, I wonder if I can try to construct an example where we where we hit the same tile from two different Twice directions in, in two in, in like competing directions, not like similar directions. Yeah, exactly. I, um, I think it's technically possible. Okay. Yeah, I'm having trouble trying to envision that. So let's see what you got. Okay. Is that a is that a um, map? just steal their map editor? It's 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 really cool. Yeah. Um, right. Okay. So let's see. Uh, why did this one even come up in the first place? Well, we're going this. We're going diagonally, and this one. So in this case, what is the forced neighbor? The one to the top. The, the north of the purple square. So it's, it's because from green, you you immediately go diagonal. And that's your first, and your, your first jump point is when you can't go diagonally further. But then green also runs the algorithm where it checks the cardinal directions for that node. It probably, it probably, that's went interesting. So south, it, it probably went southeast and southwest and northwest first. So what's funny is, um, I guess I need to expand my definition of forced neighbor, because if you're moving diagonally, mm-hmm. the, the normal neighbors that you can't choose are these, right? Do you see me kind of tracing over those? 
these yep. three nodes, or these five nodes, rather. The ones that you can normally go to are these three. So forced. You were just forced to make a little bit of a turn. Um, Correct. When, when you're searching horizontally or vertically, if you hit a wall, I guess that's not a great, that's not a great example here. Let me see here. If you hit a wall searching vertically, that doesn't count as a as a as a forced neighbor situation. You don't add this node right here into the into the open list. Mm -hmm. However, if you're moving well, diagonally it, and you're blocked off, yeah. Sorry, go ahead. It's. I was gonna say it's because if you have a diagonal move available, you have to choose that. So, if and and I think if you make a card, or you can see this really clearly. But if you can move diagonally, you can't pick a vertical, a pure vertical or pure horizontal motion unless it's the end. I think that's the the rule here. Is that is that right? If you make a card, or it starts it starts going down, it picks those nodes first instead. But yeah, you broke up a little bit right there. Can you say that one more time? Uh, I'm sorry. Um, if you if you make like a hallway, like a, a straight line hallway, it does. Like when you force it, that it has to pick a node that that is a horizontal line, it will do it. Mm -hmm. um, so, what would the hallway look like? Are you talking about this kind of hallway? Yeah, exactly. Uh, you can make put a, put another node sort of above the green one. Like you want to you want to make that first diagonal jump not possible. Uh, nope, not that one. That makes more diagonal jumps. Uh, one, uh, fill, fill in, fill in that square. Nope. Uh, I wish I could control the mouse. Um, that one, this and then one? the one to the right of it. The what? This yeah. one. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because it attempts the first diagonal move it can make there. Um, but then still, like that, that purple, that second purple square to the right of the hallway wall is like the weird one where it had to look diagonally as soon as it could. And then it's still Yeah. So this one I this one I get because Okay. This one is a forced neighbor. This one is a like a forced neighbor to me is like a, a node that you would have to examine if you didn't otherwise want to. But I think that's a limited definition because when you're moving diagonal that doesn't count, right? When we were back in this situation, we were always gonna have to check this node, right? Because that's the diagram, yeah. Ah, uh, yeah, but so so that that forced neighbor gets added, but also from the origin of the graph of the map that you have, it still checks the jump points in all directions, and one of the jump points leads to the destination. Yeah. So so it gets to the purple node, and it's like, okay, cool. Like here's here's the forced neighbor, and from green, we're gonna check everything. Okay. So it didn't. Well, have to look why don't we start writing the code? And I think okay, I yeah. think we'll. Figure out right away, like whether or not like the hero heuristic is here. But the point of like moving diagonally, the, the diagonal motion is actually really complicated. In that, what you do is you actually do the neighbor search when you're moving diagonally at every single diagonal node. So you like when you get to this node, like when you do a neighbor search for this green tile and you move diagonally, you actually look for all the node. Like you actually look. Um, You you look you look vertically and horizontally, and then you step again, and you look vert vertically and horizontally. It's it's mm -hmm. kind of a mind jam, because <laughs> it's, it's recursive basically. You basically yeah. like in your neighbor search, you repeat the same uh, operation, basically. Mm -hmm. And if any of those any of these recursive motions finds a forced neighbor, then you add. The origin point, the sort of the origin point as your force, as 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 the, you add it to the open list, basically. To the open list. Yeah. 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 It's weird. So I guess all all those horizontal. And oh, lines you know what? Here's like... the reason why you had to add this one. I, I get yeah. it now. The reason why you had to add this open one is because when you mm -hmm. do the neighbor search for this tile, mm -hmm. you go to this tile. And this actually has a force neighbor, which is this one, right? And because you found a force neighbor somewhere in the chain of like force neighbor searches, 
then this one becomes part of the open list. Okay, I get it now. Okay, that makes a lot more sense to me. Cool. So should we Great. just start writing I I, it? I didn't quite get that, but yeah, let's, let's see how that works. Uh, yeah. Okay. All right. I think, I think uh, this is, this is a valuable diagram time. and a valuable tool. Mm -hmm. How are we going to test this? What's the best way to test it? I guess we have a couple of maps, and we just want to be able to debug draw, right? Yep. OK. Yeah, de debug draw lines of different colors for and squares. Yeah, we've got that. OK. Uh, the other interesting thing about jump point search is I believe it'll let you squeak through. Oh, diagonal. Diagonals. Mm. Oh, that's easy for us to. Oh, yeah, that'll that'll do it. Nope. It yeah. is easy for. It's easy enough. For, easy enough for us to get around because I think if I just got rid of one of these things, yeah. Cool. I, I think basically we can we can we can check for that case, right? We just have to make sure. We basically have to say it's not a legal move to attempt to jump through a corner like this. Like, what, either of these things has to be open, right? Yep. yep. I think for our purposes, another thing that we're going to want to do is when we actually build the path, we're going to want to actually check to see if it tries to do something like this, this diagonal jump, mm. and actually navigate it around. Because I, I, this will look really bad, right, in the game. Yeah, does it... Does it have the same problem on the first blue arrow on the sort this of the one? Left yes, corner? exactly. Right? We'll have to oh, add another right. node there. Yeah. And then That's also the, the, the other thing that we can do is we like th we're getting into the realm of what, what's called path shaping or path smoothing, which is basically you you basically have a two phase pathfinding. The first thing you do is find the optimal path. And the second thing you do is you make it you smooth it out to make it look good. And huh. I think there's more or less two things that come to mind for this algorithm. The first one is that we want to do the thing I just talked about, which is like we want to make sure that this makes graceful steps around the corners. Yep. And the other one is when we were talking about theta star over slack. And that's if if there's like like line of sight between you, like line of sight what I mean is like you can just draw a line between you and the tile that you're going to. Why not merge some of these points together, right? Like, why not like go from here directly to the end if there's line of sight, yeah. right? I think that's correct. Yeah, and we can do that so as that, a so second like a, kind of optimization, right? So it's like a optionality check on there. Like sometimes you get a better path, sometimes you don't. That's cool. Yep. Okay. So do we um, want to take, do we want to take our A star Pathfinder and extend it, or do you want to start from scratch? Uh, I think we start from scratch because our ASR Pathfinder is actually gone. I think we got rid of it. Oh, great. Good job. Our yeah. previous Pathfinder, uh, our old Pathfinder uh, was a, well, the one that's immediately previous to this is the one that, use L, that uses L1 Pathfinder, right? Which does Correct. a bunch of pre-processing yeah. and is fast, but it's a total black box. Mm -hmm. um, I, I think I think you're right. We totally we totally deleted the A star one. That JS. We still have the priority yeah. queue though, so that's that was the hard part, right? Was implementing this whole nice. ridiculous thing. Mm -hmm. So a couple more comments before we dive into it. First of all, um, this algorithm requires no preprocessing, right? We're not reducing the graph into, you know, like. We're not even really creating a graph structure, really. We're just like looking at, at the grid directly. We're reading into the grid. So it's just like we can represent this as one contiguous array, right? Um, the second thing about this algorithm is what you're, we're actually doing a ton of work. Like all of these dashed lines, this is actually work that the algorithm did. It like looked at all of these things, right? It did a full like neighbor search for all of these things. So it would like, for, especially for this diagonal one, right? Like all of these dotted lines, it's looking at these nodes. But what it is not doing is, add, is adding each of these nodes onto the open list. And the claim by the authors of the paper, of the, of the jump point search paper, <laughs> is that what's really expensive about Dijkstra is pushing things onto the open list and doing the priority queue sorting, right? Like when you that push something sense. onto priority queue, that, 
that data structure reorganizes itself to to put to like mm-hmm. bubble up the top priority thing. Mm-hmm. Um, and that might be not great. Uh, I got an idea from I got an idea from somebody uh, who said, you know, if if you don't um, if you know that all of your uh, all of your distances are within a specific range, you don't need a priority queue. What you can do is you can just have an array of arrays, right? And the first oh, the index of the outer array is like your range. It's like how how far some, how far away something. Is. And then the interior array for each one of those things is just like all of the nodes in the open list that are that far away, right? And that's a much easier data structure to maintain, right? That's really clever. Yeah. Yeah, that's yeah. memory stable yeah. too. That's nice. Hmm. Yes, exactly. Um, it kind of gets a little bit weird when we have these like square root of twos mixed in here, right? Like our, our path distances are not integers. Mm-hmm. So we're going to hang on to the priority queue for now, but that's a, that's an optimization that we can add in, right? We can add in an optimization that uh, that includes that if we wanted it, right? Okay, yeah, absolutely. Um, let's go for it. Cool. Are we uh, do you want to? Are you giving up on TypeScript? I'm just fucking. Oh away. shit! No, <laughs> <laughs> absolutely not. <laughs> um, okay, so what this is going to take is. Mm-hmm. A start. Hmm. We started basing this on the the L1 inputs we got. Yeah, exactly. I'm just going to call this SX, SY. Hmm. I'm trying not to create. I'm paranoid about allocations. We'll see if this is awkward. I actually think the way that these are named is fine. It's just going to be weird to call. Right? And then we have. I, I think we should continue to be paranoid about allocations because our performance has been a lot more stable since we started get going down that path. Right, I agree. A width and a height. Right. Okay. Yep. And the implication is that this U and A eight array's length is W is width times height, right? Mm-hmm. I'm just gonna call this W and H. Yep. And what is the return value? I guess we're getting back. Is it a array of coordinate? I mean, to, it's gonna be to, an array to, of the jump points. It's gonna be an array of these well, things, right? That was what the L1 Pathfinder returned. And it returned them all in a single array. It was it was X Ys smashed up together, and you just had to read it two at a time. That's correct. Yeah. Yeah. So I'm fine with that. Oh. I, think, right. I think for this, that's probably a good way Sweet. to do it. Okay. Um, all right. So what we're going to do first, okay, we're starting here, right? Mm-hmm. I guess what we need to do is like get the neighbors given a direction, right? So we have a function get neighbors mm-hmm. and we have an X and a Y mm-hmm. and we have all this grid stuff, right? That's that. not going to change. Yep. We're always going to have that. This is also a bunch of pairs, right? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. But we need one more thing, which is the direction. We need Actually, the, let's just call this dx and dy. Or we need the previous direction, right? Yeah. Yeah. Honestly, so do we want to just make that an enum? If you want. Yeah, oh, you beat me to it. Yeah. I'm going to sound a lot less clever when I say that after you say this could be an enum. Yeah. Actually, I'm recording the audio, so who knows what it's going to sound like. Who knows what it's going to sound like, yeah. Okay, so let's get the neighbors. Um, so the, do they have the base case there, like, with nothing? This is the base case right here. Um, no, wait, that can't, that can't be the starting case. Oh, 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 I, I, I think I'm just talking about get neighbors here. Um, oh, okay. Because I think the base case for get neighbors is you iterate over all the directions. And oh, sick. you that basically iterate over all the directions and 
add okay. all and try to do get neighbors. For, you basically call on each one of these things, right? Cool, 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 cool. Okay, so if we are uh, moving diagonally, that's one case. And if we're moving, uh, should we split that up? the diagonal case into a different function. Let's just try doing it not in a different function for now, right? So okay. yeah. if dir is equal to do we want to exploit the numericality of this in any way? Uh, what if I put all the diagonals it. together? Oh, you, you're, not, you're not into it. Okay, let's be Nah. Let's be explicit. You you saw what I was going for right there, right? So maybe I'll I, just do this. I switch. totally did. <laughs> you could use the pass through or the the fall through switch cases. It's the perfect. That's exactly what I'm doing right now. Yeah. Comes up once in a blue moon. Oh, this is dir dot. Hmm. And I'm writing Rust all of a sudden. I don't know why I have Rust on mind. <laughs> Do you get to do Rust at work or no? Uh, no, I haven't gotten to do Rust at work. Okay. Okay. Um, so if, all right, so if we, if enter we are horizontal, going, yeah. If we venture horizontally, we can only continue in that direction, right? That's it. That's correct. Yep. Cool. Yep. So what we do is we actually just have to check for, we have to check for forced neighbors, right? Ah, we do have to look. Okay. Gotcha. Yep. 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 Um, so it might be useful for us to return whether or not one of the neighbors was forced as well, but we'll see. I think we need to know, oh, right? Because yeah. that, that, that is what tells you like whether or not you've hit a jump point or not. So sure. maybe something like a bool in here. And that's that any neighbor was forced, not which neighbor it was. Okay. Yes, exactly. Would it, uh, do you want to do something? We could do like a silly format where it's x, y, and zero or one is the third value to indicate forced neighborship. You can't have two, uh, there's only ever, only ever one forced neighbor. I, uh, I think you can have two, right? What okay. if, what if both the top one and the bottom one were filled in? Yeah, so yeah, think, yeah let's do the funny format. Let's do the funny format. I'm down. Yeah, fake tuples. Cool. That was a great auto expand. Oh, yeah, it was really good, right? Uh, I never do JS doc because I think it's silly, but I guess if I was making an open source library, it would be helpful, right? It'd be easy, yeah. <laughs> I wish there was a documentation format that let you You know, like, I, I don't want to, like, stick it all in the comments. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. Uh, returns an array of triplets. repeating myself a lot um okay that's what you were going for right yeah i like that all right so what we're going to do is we need to increment a direction in a in a particular way 
Gosh, I almost just want to do this like DX DY. Is that weird? Why, why is that? Uh, instead of dir? Well, we're just going to have to like... like a... We're just going to have yeah, to like th add... There's got to be a lookup table somewhere for each of these, right? Mm -hmm. That's what I was thinking. Yeah, instead of a way to like sort of come up with the cardinality of the direction based on the input. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Well, so some of these checks might be easier too, right? Because we could just say if you know if dx and dy are both non-zero, then you're going to diagonal, right? Mm -hmm. All right. Let's do it. Yeah. Okay. Let's let's try this and see how it goes. Do you want to call them dir x and dir y since we already have dx as destination x just to Yes, this is like delta x. So step x, step yeah. y? Yeah, I like that. That'll be nicer. Okay. I just I see future confusion especially when we try to like find and replace. Yeah, I, I know I know exactly what you're saying. If not equal 0 and step y is not equal to 0. This is the diagonal case. The one thing I don't love about my our formatting thing is that it doesn't let me to do this comment here, which I love to do. Oh yeah, that's a good one. Can we allow? Yeah, because it does that. Oh. Uh, no, I, I, that's a good question. I don't really know. I'm not sure what rule is doing this. Because that is a great place for a comment. Yeah. But for symmetry, we're just doing this. Uh, okay. Let's, ironically, let's, let, maybe I want to do the horizontal and vertical case first. I think it's easier, right? So we basically will definitely always add this one as long as it's, right? So we just want to check the grid. Oh, and that's really easy because actually, like, we're just adding. Uh, I like that. That's adding like yeah. a strict number based on which one we're looking at. Yep. Yeah. So, what is the position of that thing in the array? It is. It is x plus dx. Well, it's actually y plus dy. Mm -hmm. Times the width plus that. That's a position in the grid, right? If the grid is a, is a one dimensional array. Ah, yes, 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 yes. And we have to add both because we don't know if we're moving horizontally or right. Mm -hmm. But this will get us to the next next position. I was going to say, if grid, does that work for diagonal too? That is sort of the next one in the direction. Oh, yes, it totally does. Yeah. Yeah. OK. Uh, if grid P is equal to, it's not equal to, but well, it's equal to 0. That means it's empty, right? It's open. Let's call this the result, right? Then we push x plus dx, y plus that. Yeah, it's step x. Mm -hmm. I'm already doing it wrong. And this is w. Mm -hmm. And that's non-forced, right? Um, we didn't check. We didn't check. It's it's going to be. It's never forced, right? Only these two can be forced. Oh, only okay. yeah. Like when you're going to this direction. Great point. Yep. Yep. Okay. It's it's forced basically if a gray tile in this di in this diagram right here, a gray tile in this diagram, can be turned into a purple one, and that's because there's a wall there, right? That makes sense. OK, yep, yep, yep. Uh, 
I'd say check left. And what I mean by check left is if you're if you're going if you're facing east, your left is north. Does that make sense? If you're like a little mm-hmm. dude standing here, you're facing east, checking left is face is going north, right? Yep. Um so what is checking left? This is tough because we have to rotate. It, maybe we shouldn't assign left or right. Basically, I think what we have to do is we have to add one. Whichever whichever of step X and step Y is zero, we add one to that, right? And then we subtract one. Step X and step Y. Yep. Yep. Uh So if step x is is equal to zero, mm-hmm. else that, if step x is equal to zero, that means we're moving ver. Yeah, yeah. So let's do the horizontal case first, which is step y being equal to zero, right? Mm-hmm. And we may be able to merge code on either side of these. Mm-hmm. I'm just trying to. So no, we're checking once above and once below, right? What's that? Mm-hmm. Uh, it's good to get it all out there now because, yeah, I can't, yeah. I can't see what the optimization is, but it's clear that there might be one. Oh, I mixed these. Oof. Yeah, good save. P1 is step X is zero, which means we're moving horizontally. So we want to keep the same x position that we're at, right? Wait, sorry. Uh, step y is zero. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Does that make sense? Um. Step y is zero. Yep. And then point two is y minus one. Exactly. Okay. Yeah. So if that one is occupied, then the forced neighbor is. I think we need to know if the neighbor point is y plus 1 times w plus x plus step x. And then if grid n is open, this is a forced neighbor. Right? If this purple tile is shut off, then it can't be a forced neighbor. Like if this purple tile was Correct. actually dark gray, yep. right? Yep. Yep. That's right. And that is just x plus step x, y plus one, and that's forced, right? Mhm. Mhm. And then we copy this, and this is p two, and this is minus one. Is that right? Correct. Yeah. That's oh boy. Fun. Okay. What kind of cleanup can I do? You could just iterate a negative you... one. Yeah. You could do a two array of negative one and one and loop through that, right? Yeah, I'm f- I'm fine. I'm fine with flattening it yeah. <laughs> in this case. Yeah. 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 I know. I know what you're getting at here. Mm-hmm. Um. I guess I could you're... push this into the. Is this too much? Because we only use it the once. Uh, yeah. Uh, I do. I like seeing that though. It's going to be really hard to read that as different. I think it's better. Okay, as a, that's fine. Assignment. The compiler or the whatever JIT will take care of that. Yeah, I agree. Yeah, it, it's it's really more about readability. So let's just let mm-hmm. if you think that's more readable, let's bias towards that. And so here, I just move the pluses, right? I, I like I move. Yep. Mm-hmm. And this is plus step y, right? Correct. And here, I move the minuses. As I said, do you want to copy the first vertical chunk and just do minus to plus? I feel like it's. Good call. I was say, it's Assuming, like <laughs> uh, 
Yeah. Um, yeah, I think uh, the audio is is probably. Th th I think I guess probably my stream is probably like a th like four, three or four seconds behind, right? Um, it sure feels that way because you're, yeah, exactly, you're, you're, you're saying exactly you're uh, you're saying exactly the thing that I should be doing uh, as I'm doing it. Um, which is awesome, <laughs> which means that we're like, <laughs> you're you're following what I'm saying, what I'm typing here, because I'm not always following. Go, baby. Yeah. Yeah. There you go. Um. All right. I guess this is cool. Mm -hmm. All right. That's four of our eight directions. <laughs> yeah. Boy. <laughs> God, it's not it's not actually that bad though. It's like it's a lot, but those checks are easy. I I, I know. That they're they're these this is all cheap code, right? This is all really, really cheap. Yeah. Yeah. Um Yeah, maybe it's fine. Mm -hmm. Um so wait, so I, I have a question, or maybe maybe this comes up next after get neighbors, but like we're not pushing the next horizontal node onto the list. We keep checking. It doesn't go back into the, into the priority queue after we get neighbors. We keep going on it. I think that makes sense. OK, I had to say it out loud. Yeah, I mean, basically, we, um, we keep going until one of these things returns 0, 1, that there was a forced neighbor. And in that situation, I mean, really, we could, we don't need this. We don't need to know which one is the forced neighbor. We just need to know if there was a forced neighbor. Um, mm -hmm. So, the way we could do this is just like make the forced neighbor number the very last number, which is ugly, but like we could do that. Um, or we could just return a tuple, a two, a two tuple. Do um, we need to, um, check that we're actually at the destination in this function as well. I guess we can do that on the after we call get neighbors. So that's not a big deal. That is a good question. I, I, I think we don't have to in this function. This function is just like, give me my neighbors. Yep. This yep. is not no, give I, me my I, jump points, though. Yeah. I think, and, yeah, and I think we, we, we do give me my jump points. Yeah. We have to check. Yeah. Exactly. Um, and then we have a return statement down here, right? We have to just return res. Mm -hmm. Okay, so let's now do the diagonal case. Maybe we should split this up into horizontal. Get horizontal. I think we should maybe split it into two functions. What do you think? Okay. Yeah. Uh, should we should we do it right here where it's like we we ask for neighbors? I don't want I don't want to ask for neighbors twice, but I do want to ask for neighbors and have it call two functions that are readable. Yep. What do you call what is the word for non-diagonal? What is the word for non-diagonal? Is there a word? Uh non -diagonal. Cardinal? Let's say cardinal. I think that's a pretty good word for it. Orthogonal? No. I, it's kind of orthogonal ish. Other words besides orthogonal for non diagonal. Adjacent, non diagonal. No, all these are all these are bad. <laughs> all right, I'll do cardinal. Yeah. Cardinal's good. Oh, is it because uh, cardinal actually includes diagonal? Cardinal directions, I think in Includes Northwest. Oh, does it? Such. Mm, no, not. What not are the cardinal directions? North, South, East, West, according to Google. So. Oh. Phew. There you go. I think I think Compass Roses just include more shit.
Okay. Um, let's do the diagonal now. This is going to be a little bit, little bit more complicated. Uh, so the unforced neighbors of the diagonal. Well, are. Is it just it's just we take one of we take each of the x and y components and check it with its value at zero. Yep. Uh, ah, the first one. Yeah. The one advantage of putting this expression into the brackets here is I don't have to come up with a new variable name, but that's all. This is all totally, totally fine. I know, I know. It's worth it. Yeah, I'm down. As long as we're super clear um, <laughs> about what these mean. Yep. So we check the force neighbors and. I think there's two candidates for force neighbors. This one here and this one down here, right? Mm -hmm. It is the if you're if you're moving to the if you're moving to the north east, the candidates are the northwest one or the southeast one, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. So, luckily there's no double case here. There's only like there's only these two, right? So this is actually not that bad. The diagonal one is not that bad. Um, so P1, let's do this one to the northwest. The northwest one is if you zero one of the steps and then no, you negate it, the other step. Yeah. It's zero one, is it, or is it just negate one? Because you're still moving... Oh we, yeah, we just negate move y and negate x. Yeah, just negate so one negate. and then negate the other. Right. Yeah, yeah. That's not bad. Uh, P four. Mm -hmm. Right. Four. Okay. Oh oh oh! Wait a minute. We actually want to check this. The one, the node that we want to check first is this, is this one immediately. So that's that sounds harder. That is zeroing one in the right. Oh yeah, okay, great. And then the 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 actual neighbor is what you were saying, where we continue to add this in there, and negate we the, negate yeah. that one. Cool. Y plus step Y, yeah. And then P5 hmm. here. Actually, diagonal was simpler than, than the, other, the other one, right? It was, yeah. This is minus step Y. Hmm. And this is plus step X. Hmm. This is plus step X minus step Y. Actually, I think okay. step the decomposition to step X and step Y is not. But we could have just we could always just do that look up, look up using a direction ver like a direction lookup table at the very. That would that would have been. Um, oh yeah, well future. Okay. Okay. 
Um, yeah, I, I think the only optimization I can think of is storing x plus step x into a temporary variable and y plus step y into a temporary variable and sticking them in to, to like re- Mm, yeah, next x, next y, yeah. But this is borderline, like, because it's such a simple expression, it might be enough. It might actually convey useful information. Um, I don't really know, yeah. Yep, yep, I'm with you. Where it would get confusing is this one here, because in this case, you're reusing the same x three times, but you're, this one here, you're only, you know, you're, you're not reusing this y value here. Anyways, right. I, I think we can stick with this. Um, I think it's fine. I mean, I, I expect cases? to never look at these functions again if they if they work right. So I think this won't be the, yeah. the meat of the algorithm. Yeah, agreed. Um, let's write some test cases for this real quick, just so I, I know that I've done I've done. Okay. Yeah, that's a good idea. Ah, it's too bad I have to export this function. I'm only exporting it for the tests. I wish there was like a private export or something. Yeah. Yeah. I've wanted that we, many times in JavaScript. We could kind of do that if we make a if we put this into a folder and then do like an index, right? And and let um, the index pick what yeah. the module exports, something like that. Yeah, but I, I I don't care about the purity of our exports that much. <laughs> yeah, I, I I feel you. Um. All right, so let's just make some grids, yeah. Mm -hmm. So I guess we'll just do all the pure cases, right? Mm -hmm. um, and then how do I how do I do prettier ignore? Is it just this? I believe so. Yeah. Could we construct a grid a where? Can we construct one grid that we can actually pull all these examples from, like a five by five or something? Oh, you're Maybe just saying let's just make a spread. giant example. Yeah, because then we can just pick points on the grid to go into. Sure. All right. Hmm. So zero, 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 zero. zero. I think pretty ignore goes above the const because the it ignores the definition formatting. Yes, great. Yeah. Um, I'm going to run it real quick, and we can expand that grid. Let's do it. OK. Uh, neighbor expect get neighbors of, uh, I guess it's one, one. And what direction do we want to move? East? Sure. Grid, the width is three, right? Yep, height is three as well. What's he complaining about? You and eight array. Mm. To be. And I think this is a prettier ignore, right? Yep. We expect the neighbor. Actually, there's only going to be one, right? It's going to yeah, be. Yeah, we're just getting uh, back east. The eastern, wow. it's basically this one right here. And that is x two value one? 2, y value 1, and it's not a. F yep. Right? Yep, perfect. I see if that runs. It's good that it fails, I think. Oh, we get deep that? equality. Oh, because this is doing referential equality, right? Oh, I can do. Doesn't or is it just too equal? equal? Yeah, I think just too equal.
We're getting close to nine, but I really want to finish this. Um, oh, well, how'd that do? We failed. Is... Oh, we didn't. This is not a test. It. Oh, yeah, nothing is a test. Uh... Is it the same thing as the word test? I've never used the word I test. I think it I is. Okay. Beautiful. And does this work? No. I think I like the word test better than it. Yeah, it's the same thing. It's just a renaming of it. I love it. I actually really like the RSpec uh, context and example. uh, Just because I think it's like, it doesn't, it doesn't make it look like English. It's not cute about it, you know? I've, I've never used example. I use it in RSpec as well. (laughs) Uh, I like, I like that I use it in both test suites, so... uh... (laughs) Let's just Perhaps do it. I, I don't want to. I don't want to be too much of an iconoclast. Yeah. <laughs> no. This is fine. All right. That worked. Um, I actually kind of like using these small grids. I think it's easier to I'm, I'm, I'm describe what I we're think going it's a really for. Easy test. Yeah. Yeah. I was. I think I was wrong. So let's do it. Or we can inline the grid, but whatever. Uh, what's interesting too is that I think we can test. Um, I guess we could be on the left edge of the grid if we need to as well, but none of it really matters. Oh, we can test all the diagonals and stuff, right? We can do all, all, all those things. Yep, yep. So what if we were moving this direction? Mm-hmm. Then it is one, it is zero, zero one, one, right? Yeah. Mm-hmm. I guess we can t- test all eight directions. Is that what you're going for? Yeah, yeah, let's do it. Let's do it. Uh, so if we're going uh, basically down, yep. our one, neighbor is going to be one zero. Oh yeah, we just transpose. That makes a ton of sense. Mm-hmm. Sick. All right, uh, now is the tricky ones. Mm-hmm. Actually, I guess we're just converting some of these zeros to ones, right? Well, let's see. Yeah. For uh, those, no. No, we have we have to do many diagonal directions. Um, one one negative, then negative one negative one and one negative one. So the missing. Yeah, that works. Uh, uh, the this 17 one. should be negative. Yeah. Mm-hmm. That one. OK, so this is actually going to have three neighbors, in each, right? Mm-hmm. So what's if we're uh, going, so we're yeah. Up. Um, oh, this is interesting, because we need to make sure that we're doing it in the right and this algorithm will pick a deterministic, uh, but it's it's not going to necessarily be easy for us to figure out. You know, one we could do oh, one way we could do is we just run the test and then just see what it returns. Sounds good to me. Um, right, because the next node needs to know what direction it came from, huh? Interesting. Yeah. Two. I'm going to just type two this two out. Two two zero. Two uh-huh. one zero. Uh huh. One two, two zero. zero. Yeah, that makes sense. Oh. So this might be a prettier ignore here. Yeah, you're going to have to undo undo the formatting, though. Or fix it by hand. Yeah, gross. Notice we're going to prettier ignore this whole file. <laughs> Maybe. Pretty soon, yeah. How's this? Oh, that's cute. Yeah, I like that. Work. Okay. You're bearing with me here. Um, okay. Uh, all right. So, what is two two zero? So one and one is that we're actually moving. It's actually the vertical flip of this one, right? Say that again. Sorry. Um. 
When we're moving one and one, that is actually the vertical flip of this diagram over to the left here, right? Oh. Because our yes. y direction is, 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 is negated. Um, right, 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 right. Yep. So 220 is this one, so that is correct. Mm -hmm. 210 is this one, which is correct. And then 120 is this one, that's, so that's correct. That's what we wanted. Um, all right. Sweet. This is probably not the right way to do debug, uh, to test composition, but whatever. Yeah. I love it. It's working. If Dom me. doesn't care, I don't care. Yeah. No, I mean, like, I, as I feel like we're checking our numbers as they're coming out, and there's only so many answers to this one. Yeah. The the bad grade okay. is going to be very interesting. Yeah. Are you talking about the ones with the with, ones uh, with forced neighbors? Forced neighbors, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um negative one, negative one is to the moving to the north. That, moving to the yep. northwest, right? So zero zero diagonal. Um, yep. And then yeah, zero one and zero, one. Zero zero one zero and yeah, yeah. That's that's right. I think we might have done this correctly. Mm -hmm. Sure looks like it. Gosh, I wonder if we need to put a direction enum in the return value as well. It would be nice to not have to read. Oh, I see this. what you're saying. Yeah. 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 I feel I feel like after this we're gonna make direction and enum again because it would be easy to just switch on that and derive the Of course. One. Yeah. I think I typed that in wrong. That's, zero two zero zero one yeah. zero and one two zero. Okay. Um one one. We're going We're going diagonally this way. So these these three oh negative one one. So that's actually moving uh, this this direction. So that means th that these three are the ones we're looking. For. So zero okay. two zero is this one? Yeah, there. Zero one zero yes, and then one two mm -hmm. zero yes. Okay, that's right. All right, cool. I think we pretty much nailed this one. Well, it'd be weird if the last example was busted. <laughs> I can't wait. Zero two one zero one zero zero. Okay, so this is actually the canonical example, right? <laughs> if we we came to it last, um, so two zero zero. That's this one. Yep. Mm -hmm. Two one zero. That's that's that one. And then one zero. That's that one. Okay, so this is all correct. Nice. Right. Sick. Okay, um, so how many permutations do we need to test for forced neighbors, do you think? We could theoretically test every single situation, right? I don't, I don't think we need to. Um, okay. I wonder. How many, how many branches do we have? I do want to, let's make it, let's make a new test for this too. I'd love to see this one. I guess I yeah. write examples around, yeah. Oh no! <laughs> I Damn think, it! I think you delete the last grid. I'm confused. I don't know what just happened. Oh, because we pretty ignored. <laughs> I see. Damn. Well, we know it works. It's ignoring. Cool. 
Okay. So if we are, what's a, do we need a bigger grid for this to make it easier to sort of have things to go to? Well, maybe not. What's their examples? I think it's a little bit easier to write these things if we keep a three by three grid and maybe we can just okay. make a bunch of cases for that. Does that yeah, work? Yeah, we might, we might need, we might need more grids, I guess. Yeah. 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 Okay. Maybe That's... let's just do this case here. Cool. I like that you chose canonically that direction too. Nice. So this has a fourth node? It's going to have a fourth of, one, yeah. Of zero, zero, one, yeah. Yeah. Let's see it's probably going to be the last. Yep, that's the last one, right? Boom. Nice. Am I missing a comma? Ah, uh, I'm missing a comma here. <laughs> Dang. It's not prettier. <laughs> Nice. <laughs> you like that? <laughs> yep, love it. It's beautiful. Um what if we did this? Should add a force neighbor, expect, right? We had a fifth, yeah, fifth one of two, two, one. Yep. Yeah, there might be some ordering issues here, but otherwise, I don't know. We got it. Okay. Uh, and should we add some horizontal ones and say that? Uh, I could just. We could theoretically just do all of them. <laughs> right. Um, mm -hmm. I do think if we're about to spit a direction item out of here, we might have to rewrite all these, or we might have to refactor all these tests too. So. Well, it's true. Or there'll, be a, yeah. there'll be a fourth value. So, I don't know. Could do it, or it could catch the base cases. Well, yeah. well that that is... You, you want to do all of them for every direction? I feel like this is pretty good. It's pretty good. This doesn't test our horizontal. Uh, let's do. Let's call this one diagonal. Well, as I say, with, with that grid, can and we test? Diagonally. Oh wait, can we test a? These aren't diagonal necessarily. Can we test the horizontal case? I see what you're saying. Grid from test A. Yeah, like yeah. Let's do it. Horizontal and vertical. Um, at, at least if there's a case we can use from this, yeah. If we Which move if, if, if south we, we or north. north. Yeah. Can we do both? Yeah. It should both. add um, zero, zero, or zero, two. Let's actually do all of the directs, northeast, southwest, because we also want to prove that it's not adding force neighbors when it's two, right? Oh, so, right. Yeah, we don't. Yeah. If we are going. If we're going east, it east. should just be the eastern one, which is 210, right? That mm -hmm. should be fine. And if we're going. West, West, this is a weird case. I mean, should get. Oh, if we're going west, do we get zero, zero, one, and two, zero, one as our force neighbors? I think if we go west, it's nothing. Oh, right, because the algorithm has already. We've got. We've gotten that. We couldn't go diagonal after going horizontal. Yeah. Without a force. And then going north, mm -hmm. this is where it gets interesting, right? Mm -hmm. We should have 
zero uh one zero zero and then we should have zero zero one right yep correct Yeah. Okay. One zero zero. Oh, oh, we're going down. Sorry, I screwed that up. Oh. Yep. I mean, let's let's make one negative one because that's the that's the value we expect for that for the direction. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Nice. And then so this one, be... where we're going downward, should be one two zero, and then two, zero, one. zero two. Oh yeah, yeah. X is still zero. Yep. Yeah. What? This says nothing. Oh, typed a lot. It got Dang. it got nothing. Wait, what'd you miss? I typed eleven here. Oh yeah, that's rather than awesome. one. Cool. Great. Yeah. Is it possible to <laughs> possible to do that? Yeah, it totally is. Actually, yeah, let me order these. Mm -hmm. God, I love TypeScript. It's amazing. You have to you just have to put that in the function so good. to keep this safe, and then we're good. Yeah. So good. Beautiful. It's wild that this does the right thing. Yeah. I love it. Yeah. Cool. Okay. Um, yep. shit, it's not 15. Reason why this uh, might. Yeah. What else we got? Yeah. The only reason why this might fail is if you didn't pass, if you pass like a variable into this value, and it couldn't guarantee that that variable was in this direction. So you're right. I think eventually yeah. we're going to need. It. <laughs> I think we need. A, I think um, we need to go back to the direction you know, that we started with. Yeah. We we backed away from yeah. it too fast. For good reason. Okay. So I think we should. I think easier. we should cut it here. I think we okay. should probably end it here, but uh, this is this is finishable in the next couple of days, I think. Mm -hmm. Do you want to work on this, or or? I do. You, you we'll just talk in Slack. <laughs> okay, I'm gonna let you do it. I'm gonna let you do it. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Okay. I'm eating your. Uh, I'm gonna let no, you do this. No, one. We'll just, just say that this is Dom's you're, thing. You're fast. Yeah. I'm buying a house. I have. I've given myself a very dumb project <laughs> for the short term. Is what's happened. Okay, um, so I'll just yeah, park it I, now. I've got other things I can work, on, and then we'll uh, we'll pick it up from. How's that sound? Okay, sweet. Yeah, I will. We will. Uh, I will be hitting you up on Slack for stuff about this. But yeah, this seems pretty darn reasonable. Okay, before I go, really quick, I just want to sketch out yeah. what this is going to look like. Oh, so yeah, jump point search is like for negative one to one. Mm -hmm. Gonna ruby it up here. Um <laughs> Uh, we do we don't do get neighbors. We do like find jump. Right. Start X, start Y. And then this is actually step, step X. X. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Right. 
Do we drop height from all these? I think I saw that happen earlier. We're just assuming we got square grid. Uh, we don't need height for any of these things. Yeah, we don't really need height anywhere, actually. You're right. Oh, yeah. Cool. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Yep, and then SX or current X. Yep. Sweet. Uh, and then and find then, jump is going to be the interesting one. Yeah. Find jump is interesting because, yeah, we basically have this whole set of things, mm -hmm. right? And what is that actually doing? If horizontal vertical, right? If cardinal. Mm -hmm. We do of x plus step x. We basically go go go, go like okay, like next point our next node equals x, y plus step x, step y, right? I think I think what we're missing is the we loop over, we get neighbors, and then every diagonal neighbor, we continue to get neighbors. Yeah, it's recursive. I think this is, fine jump is going to be yeah. a function. Yeah. Yeah, 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 has to be. Yeah. So if we ah. if has forced neighbors of get neighbors of next node mm -hmm. step x step y mm -hmm. why well, I'm not sure I think I think I'll have to figure this out but I'm not sure we actually need the cardinal check um because get neighbors does that for us. Right? Just return null, right? Yeah. Um, I think yeah. we might need it. Uh, let, let me, let me, let me. Uh, if it has forced neighbors, then return next node. This is your jump point, right? Mm -hmm. Otherwise, if we're moving in a diagonal direction, this is the complicated. Oh, actually, this should be a jump. Because it's recursive, right? Where's our recursive call? There's uh, an else I think, here. I think, I think we always get neighbors. If neighbors has force neighbors we return else we jump on each of the neighbors or we find jump for each of the neighbors find jump i think we just find jump on the next thing in the in the next direction right like it's like next node x next node dot y step x step y grid w because that that's what this whole um right yeah that's this dotted check. line here, right? I see. Yeah, 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 exactly, exactly. Um, this is us just continuing to move in that, that one direction if it's just cardinal. If it's diagonal, I think we say if... I think we have the same logic here. Mm -hmm. 
So actually, I think this just goes out, right? Yeah, we, we always... Get Neighbors is always the same thing, yeah. It's always that. Mm-hmm. So if it's diagonal, we we find jump. And just doing it recursively for uh, the diagonal. Then we and do it for the, the yeah, yep, yeah, and the and the cardinal directions around it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Return if the thing is not null. Mm -hmm. If the thing is not null. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, return, return. Yeah. That line. Yep. So it's really if diagonal. These two things. And then that. Yep. Yep. Cool. And then that. Okay. So the question that. is, is like, um, I think we need to, do we need to, like, the algorithm um, in the paper. Let me try to find the dude's paper one more time. Uh, that's this one here. Oh, yes. Uh, <laughs> I like how he doesn't even link to his own paper. Come on, guy. I mean, usually Bill from my home right? page. Like, these things are usually, uh, yeah, university locked in the most bullshit way. Oh, you're right. That's probably what he was afraid of. Uh, I don't. I'm sure he can't. But he can it. at least yeah. still link to it, right? <laughs> mm -hmm. Well, he linked to his university page, uh, which probably links to it. Yeah, there you go. Oh, so this is kind of his algorithm. Um, oh, we actually have if 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 next node is goal. There you go. Turn next node. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Nice. So I, I think we actually just derived this dude's algorithm, right? I think so. He says step and yeah. step. So it's this sort of jump step once in that direction. Mm -hmm. And if the next node is an obstacle or outside the grid, uh, return null. If mm -hmm. the next node is the goal, return the next node. If it has forced neighbors, like if, if it has forced neighbors here, then return the next node. If it's diagonal, for each cardinal direction in the diagonal vector, he returns on, on the second, first. Did you have this on a second monitor while you were doing this? Like... No, this. <laughs> I'll tell you what. This is not the first time that we've we've written an algorithm that other people have written. Um, I know. I was trying to figure the, out how to do you did the exact order and factoring. I'm impressed. <laughs> oh, well, I added the goal in there exactly there because mm -hmm. otherwise, yeah. The question that I have is that his for loop in here, it short circuits the other direction. And I don't think that's correct. I think short you need circuits. to. Ours also short circuits. See how it returns? Yeah, I, don't, so I think we actually need to do the union of these two things, right? Oh, OK. Interesting. We need hmm. to do like. A equals this, B equals this. If A or B return, maybe, yeah. If A and B return A, B, else yeah. if A return A, else if B return B, right? I think that's mm -hmm. what we have to do. It, like, I, I, I think that's also what they mean here, but for some reason they didn't add both cases, right? I, I think that's the, well, I wonder, I've never seen the for all syntax, but I wonder if that is actually meant to be sort of uh, a collective for. Yeah, and you know what, you know what, this is a case, uh, let me, let me, uh, let me re-edit this. Um. That's how we get both of these jump, jump points, right? Mm-hmm. Is if we re return, we, we we get this case here. Ah, yep, that makes sense. Yeah. Okay. Cool. All right. Um, nice. 
Well, I'm I'm glad. I, like talking about this out loud, I think solidified in my head because otherwise I was I was quite dubious. Yeah. I, what session are we now? Ninety four. I'm pretty sure this was ninety four. Yeah, because I have ninety two to do. I have ninety two to transcribe, which means you have ninety three. <laughs> Oh my god. And where's the website uh, at? For... All right. Very satisfying. All right, Dom. Do your worst on that. Uh, I will. <laughs> status <laughs> checks failed. Uh, no. Wait, what? Our push branch protection? protection. I need to turn branch protection off. That's ridiculous. Can you not push to me? What have we been doing? I well no I I turned on some branch protection rules recently, um, uh, but it's not doing what I want. So recently, as in like yesterday? Uh, possibly yesterday. Okay. Okay. Nope. Nope. Let's see. Edit. Require status checks before merging. Require linear history. Include. I I think it's just this one I have to turn off. Someone's gonna microphone microphone's recording to get your password off your keyboard. Classic. Oh god damn it. Security vulnerability. Alright, alright, that works. Nice. Um okay. Alrighty. That is it for today. Sweet. Man, this is a good idea. Everyone go home. Gonna, I'm excited. <laughs> I'm glad that like right. it makes sense, right? <laughs> it, it does make sense. That's the best part. Yeah. 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 All right, sick. Uh, I'm going to hit the stop button. Uh, see Do you it. on Thursday.